Hello my loves and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another mukbang. <laughs> so today we're having Taco Bell. Guys, I have gotten so many requests to do Taco Bell. So this is for you guys who have been requesting Taco Bell. I haven't had Taco Bell in years and years and years. So I've been trying out all these foods for you guys. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna tell you guys really quick what I got. So I got my phone here because I might have forgotten what a lot of these things are called. So here is the strawberry Skittles freeze and then here's the Mountain Dew Baja Blast freeze. I've watched many mukbangs, people love these, so really wanna give these a try. And then, in this big bag of food, we got some stuff too, so let's see. So this right here is the Crunch Wrap Supreme. I think it is. It's a really big quesadilla, I believe. Looks like this. Crunch Wrap Supreme. And then we got some tacos. I don't know which Doritos Tacos, Doritos Locos Tacos. Um, these are all Supremes, by the way. I'm not sure what this one is. Nacho Cheese Doritos Locos Supreme. Right here. Bam. And then we got cheesy Chalupa Supreme. Chalupa Supreme. Bam. And then we have, what is this? Oh my goodness. Oh, two Chalupa Supremes. What? I ordered two? Hmm. Okay, so that's two Chalupa Supremes. And then we got a burrito in here. What is this one called? This is the seven layer burrito. Okay. And then, what else do we have? Uh, Double Decker Taco Supreme. That looks like this. So it's like a soft tortilla and then a crunchy tortilla inside. So it's also supreme. All these are supreme, supremes. And then, <laughs> last, last stuff. Last one, guys. I got their, we, I got their nacho cheese Doritos Locos Tacos Supreme. We, ooh, these smell really good, guys. Whoa, okay, so, and then I got a ton, like, ton of sauce, and this is the hot. Okay, so I'm gonna set up really quick so it make it look nice and not like crazy like this. We'll be right back. All right, my loves, let's get to grubbing. I wanna taste these first, this is the Mountain Dew one. Look at how they filled them up, guys. Like, not even all the way to the top. This is good, it tastes like a, like a boli. Like a Mexican popsicle. It tastes like Skittles. Okay. I really want to taste these nachos, nacho fries. Wow. That's really good. Sorry, I have a mirror right here that I like to keep just so, just so I can know if there's anything on my face. We're good. They're good. They're good. Okay, now I'm gonna take a bite of the seven layers um, burrito. Let's see. I'm really picky with my burritos, guys. Basically just some beans, guacamole, uh, sour cream, lettuce, and rice. It's okay. The Supreme Crunch Wrap. Mm. 
-hmm. I like that. I'm gonna open up a sauce packet and I'm gonna try the, I think this is the double decker taco, supreme taco. Okay. Nice and saucy. Oh, that was really good. Here's the Doritos Locos Nacho Taco, I think. It's kind of like broken, so I'm just gonna... We're gonna drench it in sauce. Okay. Mm. That was messy. But that was because it was all broken. See, it's all broken. Oh my god. Okay. What are you guys eating with me right now? I know I'm a little quiet right now because I'm just tasting. Tasting everything. Here's a chalupa. I like that. Oh, I'm sorry. God, I hope she doesn't start screaming. I'm sorry if you guys start hearing my neighbor scream. She does this on a regular basis. But she legit just started. She's like, oh, she's going to fill a mukbang? Let me be background music. But... Those nacho fries? Good. Good, good. Love. So, I know a lot of you guys have been like requesting like story times, like talking through my videos and not just eat. Um, I agree because you guys have also mentioned that you guys are eating with me and you guys just want to feel like we're sitting down together and talking. So, let's talk about how it's been. Uh, for me, okay, so I want to talk about all the BS and drama it is having a child young. I had Valerie, well, I, I found out I was pregnant with Valerie when I was 17. It was not planned, but we weren't using protection, so it was gonna happen, you know? He was my first. First boyfriend, first love. Not first kiss though, because I was 17, I had already like kissed a couple guys before, you know? But, he was the first person to show me love and affection and care in a really messed up way because looking back now I'm just like girl no come on now yeah but
I think it's like very common with like Hispanics. Um, Hispanic old school parents are like very tough love. Um, not very affectionate with their kids. Um, and that's how my parents were and I think I needed a lot of that, you know? I did. I did need a lot. I needed their love and affection and, you know. My parents were just like always tough love with me. So... Falling in love with the first guy who showed me some affection and love was, I guess, maybe not surprising because it was, I, I was looking for it, I was craving it. I was craving the attention of a man to like want me, be with me, a boyfriend. Um, I wasn't thinking right, you know, like, but it's like you're young and like your head isn't in the right space and nobody, nobody was talking to me about like, Claudia, don't do this. All my mom would say is, you better not get pregnant, you know, like that, that well, okay, but we need it there has to be more than that you know like you know cool no vayas a salir con tu domingo siete that's it you know they didn't like him he was a gaminger he smoked weed all the time my parents hated that, so they tried to do everything in their power for me not to be with him. It would be constant arguments and stuff, you know? And I was doing dumb stuff for him, like skipping class. I was in high, my, I was in my senior year in high school. I was ditching class, ditching school to go meet with him. I was doing really dumb stuff, guys. He did love me, but I didn't really get to spend a lot of time with him, you know? I would always be like behind. Sneaky. Hiding, you know? And they're pregnant to my parents scandal um had Valerie before I had Valerie as soon as I had graduated high school I went to go live with him and his mom in the south side of Chicago I was born and raised in the north side of Chicago so it was like huge difference for me But I was excited that I was finally going to go live with him <laughs> and know where, what he's doing all the time and stuff like that because I wouldn't know exactly what he was doing. I just know that he was out with some friends, maybe with some girls. Like I was always tripping. It was always drama. But when he was there, he would show me affection and love and I would just forget about everything. So. Moving in with him, I was like, oh, well, now I'm going to have him on check, right? Did not stop him from going out and doing his thing. I don't smoke weed, so I didn't like him smoking weed. Because he wasn't himself, like he would come back all high and I, I just feel like it's a different person, you know? I enjoyed him for him, like his time when he was himself, not high. So I didn't smoke, so I didn't like him getting high. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys would understand what I'm saying. So 
I still don't smoke or like it. I have tried it a few times. I don't like it at all. I don't like the feeling. I don't do it. So, moving on him. I have a mom. Things didn't get better. He would still go out every single night. Every single night. Come back like at 3, 4, 5 in the morning. Super high or drunk. I'd be at his mom's house in a room by myself all freaking day. All day. It was like jail. And I couldn't go nowhere. Like, I would go to my mom's house, but, like, I would just be there for a little bit, right? But, like, there was, like, nothing really to talk It was, like, always just really awkward and, like, weird. So, um, I would go to my mom's house, like, here and there. But for the most part, I would spend many days all the time inside that room in the basement in the south side. Far away from my family. No friends. Nothing like that. Well, he was out with his friends. Doing his thing. Keep September. Valerie was born. Um, it was shortly after she was born, I left. I had... Okay, but before I had left, um, that time that I was there with him after I had a Valerie, I think it was like a couple months, and then I left. I remember it was like during the winter. So it must have been like before Christmas or something like that. Um, so he wouldn't help me with Valerie. Valerie was a crying baby. Like she would cry all the time and I was going to, I was going to lose my, you know, I was going to lose it. I'd stay up all night, all day, you know, no job. No support from no one. So finally, started talking to my best friend again. And she got me a job at this place that we call La Poyera. A chicken factory, super cold inside. You stand in this one spot from six in the morning to like three in the afternoon. Oh, or unless you get a break, right? And it's freezing cold in there because, you know, obviously it has to be like freezing temperature. But you stand in there and, and all you do is like move, move the chicken. All day, guys. Then I would go home and Valerie would be crying and I would be trying to put her to sleep and I couldn't. because She would cry and cry and he wouldn't help me. He wasn't home. Then he would get home and he would fall asleep. He would fall asleep. He wouldn't even help me. So I was losing it, guys. I, I was there for like maybe a couple weeks and then I just quit. I, I couldn't do it. And then left, left his house, um, went to go move in with my mom's. Was it the greatest idea? No, but it was just better. It was just better, you know? Did it solve any problems? Did things get better? No, no, they didn't, no. It was like, it was the start to many years of drama with my parents. My aunt. Um, I had a job at Subway. Yeah, it was at Subway. And then it was my brother. Because he was working, my brother was working at Subway, and then he got me a job at Subway. So we were all working there. My sister in law got a job there. So, like, it was all of us. It was fun. It was great. I loved it. It wasn't enough money for me to be like, oh, I'm moving out though. You know, moving out. But my, my parents would take care of Valerie, but I would have to hear shit from them all the time. Like, it was just like, a crap show. It was just drama on top of drama on top of drama because my parents are the type of parents I don't know if it's just like because they're Hispanic but I did this for you and I'm doing this for you and blah 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 like they so that's I think that that's why I hate it when people do something for you and then they throw it in your face later on like don't do anything for me if you're only doing it to throw it in my face 
whenever you feel like it's necessary. So I hate it when people do something for me if I ever need. And then they're later on they're like, well, blah 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 blah. Don't don't do it. Like it defeats the whole purpose of like why you even did it. You know? Like no. If you're gonna do something for someone, just do it out of your kindness of your heart. And that's it. You know? Oh. That's what my parents were. I feel like I really didn't get to enjoy my childhood because my parents wouldn't let me go out anywhere when I was younger before I got pregnant. So I would have to always do things like, I would have to like rebel. I would have to do things behind their back and stuff like that. Um, so like when I had Valerie, I feel like I had no, no party life, like nothing, nothing. Like I hadn't gotten anything out of my system. So it was hard. I would dedicate my checks to Valerie, buy her really cute, cute um, dresses and shoes and, and little accessories. Like I would always have her looking so cute. Um, like whatever little check I made. So I couldn't move out. It wasn't like a check that I would get and I'm like, oh, I can move out. So it took me a long time for me to finally be like, hey, I'm leaving you know I wish I could have I wish I could have I wish I would have had the money to like be able to move out but I didn't because I was young and I was dumb I didn't think things through and I was like we're just gonna do this you know we're just gonna roll with it uh having a very little supportive um family but at the same time I think like my mom was having it really hard because I do have a little brother who's literally not even not even a year older than my than my daughter so my daughter is 10 and my little brother just from 11 so, I mean, I, I, I could see, like, how the struggle was, was there, you know? But, I don't know. It was, it was just, like, crazy. So, at that time, we were living in an apartment in the city. And then, a few years ago, um, after Subway, I, had, I got a job at Burger King. And then, after Burger King, I said, F this, and I got into the medical field. Now, I'm still in the medical field. Um, uh, let me see. Moved in to a new house that my parents bought a few years ago. This apartment that we were living in in the city, guys, my parents had their room. My aunt had her own room. My brother, uh, my, I'm the oldest. And then Omar is the second to oldest. And then my little brother is obviously my little brother. So I'm the oldest. So my, my brother Omar, he would sleep in the living room. And then um, I would sleep in a couch. Okay, so it's really hard to explain. Okay, so the dining room. Omar would sleep in the dining room in a bed. Like the apartment wasn't even like a, like you would walk in and be like, oh, there's a dining room. This is, no, it was like all a mess. Oh, straight up Hispanic. Bunch of people living in an apartment mess. So I slept in a couch in the living room, and then Valerie slept in another couch in the living room. Then my brother slept in the room next, which it wasn't even a room, guys. Like, everything was open. It was in a bed in the, what's it called? In the, what the fuck? <laughs> guys, gotta get out of here soon. Okay, this place is, there's another shit show. But, um, okay, so, I lost my train of thought, guys. I'm sorry. Okay, so then my brother would sleep in the dining room in a bed. And then my parents would hit their room and then my aunt, her room. So we were all crowded. And it, it was just crazy because we were all always in each other's face. Okay? But I was the black sheep of the family. I was the one that everybody went to to relieve their stress. Except my brother. My brother, Omar. He was always very supportive. Me and my brother, Omar, would argue and fight so much as kids. And as soon as... Um, he found out that I was pregnant. Like, we just created the sibling bond, like, starting that day. So, um, ever since then, my brother has been super supportive, always there for me. I text him when I'm drunk and sad. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's always been there. So, he was, like, the only person I wouldn't argue with. Um, on the other hand, it was crazy between me and... It was, like, my mom, my dad, 
and my aunt would like bunch up on me and like argue with me. You're not doing anything with your life. Um, you're, you're a bad mom. Like that would make me seem like a bad person when I was doing everything I could literally to come up in life. But they would just like pick on me. I guess, I don't know if they, I'm pretty sure they were just angry at me for still being pregnant, you know, and for still being there. And I gave my own place, but I couldn't do anything about it. Like I literally could not go anywhere, guys. I couldn't do anything about it. I wish I could have left. I wish I would have had the money. So, I wasn't with Valerie's dad anymore. I would ask him for money. He wouldn't give me any money. He would give me money like here and there. And then, by giving me like $100, he'd be like, alright, you're set for the year. You know, that, that was his train of thought. He never had a job. I don't know where he got this money from. With whatever money he would give me throughout the, throughout the time. Uh, he was always game making. He went deeper into drugs. He got a girlfriend. She was also a drug addict, so it didn't help. I wouldn't let Valerie, I wouldn't let him take care of Valerie. And the times that I would let him take care of Valerie, he would go drop her off with his mom. So I was like, no, 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 it's not gonna happen. So there came a point where I noticed that like his drug um, addiction had gotten like increased by a lot. It wasn't just weed. I could tell it wasn't weed because like weed makes you, I don't know what weed. So I know what weed looks like when somebody smokes weed. And I know that his high wasn't no longer weed because he was like very, very sluggish and very like, like it would take him longer to process thoughts and like his movements. So no, I wouldn't let Valerie see him anymore. Um, not see him anymore, but like him take her anymore. Um, it was hard guys. Then he passed away. If you guys haven't seen those videos, go check them out. I'll link them down in the description box below. So you guys know what happened, everything, everything explained. So then we moved because my parents bought a house on the suburbs. I'm not going into detail about I'm like messing out with all stuff, but I'm kinda of trying to summarize like everything. I'm going to the medical field. We moved out over here, over here to the suburbs. <coughs> Inhaled a <coughs> tomato. <coughs> I had my own room. My aunt had found her own apartment. By the way, things between me and my aunt got squashed. They got squashed the day of Valerie's dad's funeral. We hugged it out. We talked. Um, so things have been better. She was here at my Christmas party. Everything's just better with my aunt now. <coughs> I think what it was is that we all needed our own space. Or me to move out. So me, I, you know, my parents got a house. Moved in. And had our own place. <coughs> my, uh... I had my own room, so me and Valerie had like our own privacy. Things got better. I think like we had me and my mom had only argued once, maybe, and that, that was it. That was it. That was like the end of the day we moved out of that apartment was the end of all the arguments. That was the end of all the arguments. Maybe, maybe that apartment just had like a bad, like vibe. <laughs> okay, you guys are gonna laugh, okay? But I don't care. I don't care talking about it. Okay. My mom, okay, my mom isn't the type to be like, okay, I have to like analyze myself and <clears throat> think, okay, what is wrong with me as a mom? What am I doing wrong as a mom to make things better? No. Everything is my fault. <laughs> my fault, okay? Me. It was me. Everything was me, right? She hired this this man who was to to perform an exorcism on me, okay? I'm still trying to process it, guys. I get home from work and she's she's there with like a man in the living room. 
And then my mom's like, you, if you guys know, Hispanics are very like, I don't know if I used to change witchcraft, but like they're they're really into like supernatural stuff. I don't I don't know how, what to call it, like like a priest that comes and like performs an exorcism on you, or like I don't know if it's like religious. Or I don't know what it has to do, but <clears throat> she she had this man right, and he was like supposed to pray over me, and then like okay, so this is what happened. Okay, this is what happened during my exorcism. Um, I'm in I'm in the room right. I'm in the room with him, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and he's like praying over me and then he's like oh, I have my eyes closed and I'm laying in the bed he, this fucking dude is over me he's like on top of me literally and I'm just like well we might have said you bought a smash or, or what what's what happening yeah, whatever anyways <coughs> <coughs> starts praying over me he, and then he starts saying uh, he, he was saying smash but he's like demon leave 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 demon you know and then I was like I literally wanted to crack up because the situation was hilarious and I was doing everything in my part <coughs> to contain myself from like cracking up because then if I crack up this guy's gonna really think in his head that I there's a demon going on in here you know but it's just funny it's just funny I don't believe in this stuff I just think it's funny <coughs> sorry that tomato inhalation by the way I think I'm full guys so he's in there performing an exorcism on me. Dude's, dude's like over me and shit. Um, <clears throat> he's saying de he's telling me he's telling the demon inside of me to go away, and I'm over here trying to hold it, not crack up. And then he's like, "Open your eyes, Satan!" <clears throat> and I'm like, "Should I open my eyes? I don't know what to do. Should I, should I open my eyes? Whatever." So I keep my eyes closed. Whatever. Do as he says, you know. Um, and then. He says, he, he tells me to wake up. I was awake the whole time. He tells me to wake up or something like that and to cough, to cough and then, or, or throw up or something like that so the demon can come out. And I'm like, bro, okay, first of all, I don't have the urge to cough. And then like, second of all, like, I'm not gonna throw up. Like, what the heck? No, like, this, this is a scam. Mom, you just got scammed, okay? So whatever, do leaves, so according to him, the, the demonic thing had, I really left. By the way, my mom had done this because of my sleep paralysis. She really put the the trigger of my sleep paralysis was really them. Okay, them. They are the ones who need the exorcism, not me. So, dude leaves, and I think that was just like one of the funniest things ever. Cause like Hispanics do that a lot. Like they'll take an egg and they'll like cleanse you, and then like when you crack the egg, it's like all weird and black and like I don't know. Us Hispanics do a lot of weird things. I don't do any of that. Like my parents used to like hire this lady so she can come and like cleanse us from head to toe. Like it was just a bunch of weird things. Is that witchcraft guys? I don't even know what it is. Like what is it? Um, <clears throat> but it's very common in the in the Hispanic community when people do things like that. You, you go to like cleanse spots. I think there's like cleanse spots everywhere. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, moving forward, uh, then yeah, I just, life got a little bit better, you know, like, but it's been hard, guys, it's been hard to financially support yourself and a child, and then not have a career, and then try to have a career while with a child that depends on you 100%, and then having parents that are nagging at you all the time when you're just do, trying to do your best to come up in life somehow, without hearing all the BS in the background, all you just wanna hear is, you got this girl, you got this, you could do it, you need a hand, let me know. Like, no, my parents were not like that. <clears throat> it was the complete opposite. It was like, you better work, blah, blah, blah. And you know, it was just, it was crazy. But thankfully, I'm so happy. Thank the world, thank the universe, thank God that, <clears throat> I mean, I'm not where I wanna be in life, but I'm definitely, not where I used to be um, back then because now I could say, hey, I got money to pay my rent, money to pay my bills, and that's that's what matters. Money to put food in the fridge, dress my daughter, dress myself, like, but I have came along so far. So what I want to say is that if you're a young viewer, you think you're in love and you want to have a baby, and it, you don't, you ain't got no job, <clears throat> your bank account is on zero, um, a few bucks, 
you can barely support yourself. Your boy, <coughs> your boyfriend is the same. You guys are like, oh, well, we're gonna graduate and get jobs at, you know, here and everything will be, no, it's not. Focus on yourself. I know you guys are in love. Stay like that, stay in love. Try each other for a while. Save, save your virginity until like a special, special day. You know, like this, these are the types of like advice I give to Valerie, like, she sees what I've been through and I genuinely can tell she sees what I've been through and she takes all of that into like accountability like she takes that in absorbs that and processes it through her head and she sees that I've been through a lot and she knows how my parents have been with me and it sucks because like I hate that Valerie would see my parents be like that with me for many many years and you know, I'm I'm ha I'm so happy that I have such a good a good child, a good kind-hearted child, that she doesn't, you know, hate them, have any types of ha t type of hatred towards them, or anything like that. <sighs> Cause we've been through some some crazy stuff, guys. Um, but she, I could tell that she's proud of me, and I'm so proud of her. Like she has my back. She's she's like my little best friend, and she's got my back. And she try she doesn't do anything to make it hard on me because she sees that I go to work 12 hours a day or on the daily. Um, I come back tired. I try to you know cook, do what I, what I can for her, and whatever little thing I buy for her, whatever big thing I buy for her, she very very she takes such good care of it, and she gets good grades in school. And I'm just I'm just so <sighs> I'm just so happy to have a good child, you know. So for all the single moms out there who do it on their own 100%, um, I love you guys. You guys are the MVPs. And even for the single dads out there who do it 100% on their own, I'm not just saying that women are the only ones who um, <clears throat> go through it, but men do too. Keep keep pushing through. Things get better. Um, if you have the choice right now to... Um, Think smart and just get done with school, get done, get your career, make your money, find the perfect guy, get married to him, make sure that there's a good future or not even like a, an ounce of like so much struggle for you to, you know, get your child along. Like with me, like I started from the bottom, bottom guys, no job. It was really hard for me, but thankfully many years later, like I'm, I can, I got my own place. I support my own child 100%. Her father's deceased, but <clears throat> I'm doing it on my own. Mind you, I don't get any assistance from the government. <laughs> I do all of this on my own, guys. <clears throat> so you guys can too. If you are a single mom out there struggling, you can. You can do it. I 100% believe in you. If I can do it, you can do it. I put up with my parents for so many years, but look, sometimes you just got to put up with, with some some crazy stuff <clears throat> before things get better but yeah guys i hope that you guys enjoyed this mukbang i'm not going to try to make it any much longer i am done i feel like i literally just tried everything i really enjoyed these nacho fries they were very delicious the burrito was eh you guys already know my opinion if you guys watch my chipotle mukbang you guys know that i'm not big on burritos from fast food places or even um authentic mexican food places um let's see the supreme crunch wrap whatever it was pretty good the the soft shell taco the, these tacos right here were pretty good but i'm not a big fan of taco bell uh but it was good it was all right all right well anyways guys love you guys so much thank you for being on my channel thank you for watching this video if you guys enjoyed this video give it a huge thumbs up i hope that you guys enjoyed this conversation we had um let me know what you guys are eating with me <sighs> thank you for being a subscriber I love you guys so much, and again, thank you for your support, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!